Thank you. We turn to our next item of business, which is topical questions, and our first question is from Murdo Fraser. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what its position is regarding the performance of Scotland's rail services and what action is being taken to improve provision. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. Uh, the ongoing train cancellations and capacity challenges in the east of Scotland, particularly across Fife, are unacceptable to the Scottish Government and passengers alike. I made this very clear to Abellio ScotRail and also to Abellio, Abellio's Dutch Government owners, with whom I met recently. I stress that action must be taken immediately to reduce the level of train cancellations and complete the driver training programme for the new and refurbished trains. Transport Scotland officials are also in daily contact with ScotRail senior management to monitor closely the training programme and review the anticipated train cancellations. I meet with Alec Hines tomorrow uh, and will seek further assurances that there is a strong focus on improving performance in the east of Scotland. Murdo Fraser. Can I thank the, the Cabinet Secretary for that response? As he, as he pointed out, there has been a particular problem in Fife over the last few weeks, and I've been contacted by many uh, angry uh, constituents raising concerns about the level of service cancellations. On the 16th of April, between 4 and 6.30 p.m., no fewer than five Edinburgh to Fife services were cancelled at the peak commuter time, leaving, leading to what one constituent described to me as unsafe, overcrowded conditions on one of the other trains. Now, ScotRail claim the cancellations are due to staff training, but is there any other provider of a public service that thinks the only way they can train staff is by cancelling the services that are available to the public and making the public unsafe as a result? Surely this is not acceptable behaviour. Secretary. Officer, um, as I've uh, said in this chamber on a number of occasions in recent times and also at the REC committee when we were considering the remedial plan is that the performance that we have from ScotRail at the present time in relation to cancellations, particularly in areas such as Fife, is unacceptable. Uh, the very reason that a remedial notice was issued was because of the levels of uh, cancellations on the Fife route. And I uh, fully expect ScotRail to implement all of the actions that are set out within the remedial plan are now part of the franchise agreement to ensure that we start to see improvements uh, being made. The member will be aware that there is a complex variety of reasons as to why um, ScotRail find themselves in this situation around training with the late arrival of the refurbished and also the new rolling stock and also uh, issues in relation to uh, the way in which uh, staffing and crew levels have been managed in the east of Scotland. But notwithstanding the issues, it is unacceptable. And that's why they were issued with the remedial notice. And I expect them to fully implement those so that those passengers in the Fife area uh, and in east of Scotland as a whole see the benefits from the very significant investment we're putting into rail in Scotland. Murder Fraser. Can, can I thank the, the Cabinet Secretary again for that further information? But my constituents are fed up hearing excuses. We've been told for, for weeks, if not months, that services are going to improve, and yet what they see are services actually deteriorating. What, one month ago, the First Minister said in this chamber, ScotRail were drinking in the last chance saloon. When are the Scottish Government going to call last orders on them? So as the member will, be, uh, member will be aware in the remedial plan, or if he's not in the remedial plan, there's a timeline for each of the actions that they must take, including the additional recruitment of drivers and conductors and also the completion of their training of staff. And the training of staff, which is a key aspect, which is having an impact on uh, commuters within the east of Scotland, is due to be completed for the timetable change on the 19th of May. Uh, Transport Scotland, in their engagement with ScotRail, have been given assurances that ScotRail still expect to complete that training programme uh, within that time frame, which will provide greater resilience uh, within the east of Scotland and passengers will see some improvements as a result of that. However, the wider improvements in the east of Scotland will not be realised until we have the uh, implementation of the additional high-speed trains uh, into the network and also uh, the wider introduction of the new Hitachi 385 trains, which will allow for additional diesel rolling stock to be moved to the east of the country. Uh, that will then uh, be affected by the uh, timetable change in December of this year, which pr should produce uh, significant benefits to the east of Scotland. But notwithstanding that, in the short term, uh, the actions which uh, uh, ScotRail are taking forward are actions which they intend to focus on making sure they deliver improvements in the east of Scotland. And I'll make sure through my officials and my engagement with them, we maintain their focus on that very issue. And just to let uh, the Minister and members know, there are eight members who wish to ask supplementaries on this, all from different parts of the country, I imagine. So we'll try and get through at least as many as we can. Christine Graham to be followed by James Kelly. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary's meeting tomorrow with Alec Hines 
to raise the issue of cancellations on Easter Sunday on the Borders Railway when 15 scheduled train journeys were cancelled. For my constituents, another raw deal, and no doubt losing potential tourists to Newton Grange Mining Museum, Melrose and its Abbey, and even Abbotsford. So back to that last chance saloon, forget last orders. How close is ScotRail now to the exit door of the last chance saloon? Cabinet Secretary. Yeah, President Officer, uh, as I made very clear at the REC Committee, if there is one aspect of the remedial plan which is not implemented and fulfilled by ScotRail Abellio, uh, then they are in default of the, uh, the franchise agreement, which can result in the franchise being removed uh, from them. In relation to the particular cancellations that the member made reference to, as did uh, Mr uh, Fraser, they are of an unacceptable uh, level. Uh, the reasons which have been given to me by ScotRail for that is a combination of uh, uh, staff leave uh, and uh, staff uh, not taking up uh, rest day working, uh, which is why it's important that they recruit additional drivers and additional conductors, which is uh, two of the key commitments set out within the remedial plan. However, that will take time uh, to be delivered, uh, but it's important that they continue to make progress and looking to address these issues uh, as quickly as possible in order to ensure that the type of experience that, our, uh, that Christine Graham's uh, constituents had um, on Easter Sunday uh, are not experienced again in the future. James Kelly to be followed by Liz Smith. Thank you. With 27,000 cancellations in the last year, the ScotRail service has become a shambles and a national embarrassment. Uh, passengers are sick fed up of the delays, the cancellations which affects their daily life. Meanwhile, the, the government and the Cabinet Secretary uh, sit on their hands. Is it not time that the Cabinet Secretary stepped in, stripped a belly of the contract and put in place a publicly owned rail service which puts passengers first? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, uh, first of all, I'm surprised at Mr Kelly's question because, as Mr Kelly will be aware, we don't have the power to actually set up a public sector rail service here in Scotland. It's a matter which is reserved to the UK Government, and I hope we now have the support of the Labour Party in Scotland to see changes to the Railway Act, which would allow us to look at a whole range of models on how we could deliver our rail services here in Scotland, including the public sector option, which is one that the Labour Party believe is the main way in which to address these matters. But I certainly do hope this is now an indication that we have support from the Labour Party to see the full devolution of railway powers to this Scottish Parliament to allow us to have that opportunity. And when we're in that position, we'll certainly look at taking forward what we think is the best option for Scotland's railways. Liz Smith to be followed by Colin Beattie. Uh, thank you. Could the Cabinet Secretary tell us exactly how many train drivers, qualified train drivers, are we short in ScotRail? And what are we going to do in the short run to ensure that these trains are able to run properly? Cabinet Secretary. So if the member gives consideration to the remedial plan which was issued by ScotRail, they set out in there that they are recruiting an extra 55 new drivers in order to address the shortfall they have at the present moment. That's a piece of work which they're undertaking at the present time and they are advertising and recruiting at the present time. Alongside that, they are training some of the drivers which they have at the present moment to be able to operate additional fleets. So those who are trained in a particular fleet are also being trained to operate other trains in order to provide greater resilience within their existing complement. Alongside the 55 drivers which they are recruiting for the whole of the network, uh, with a specific focus on the East, they are also recruiting some 30 additional conductors that will be in place by July of this year. And the funding commitment they've made to deliver on that is funding which has been delivered through uh, Abellio ScotRail directly themselves. So that's the figures which ScotRail believe they need to address the existing shortfall and to give them the resilience that they require within the existing complement of staff they have, alongside the additional training programme that they have in place for their drivers and conductors. Colin Beattie to be followed by Claire Baker. Can the Cabinet Secretary give an indication of what percentage of delays over the past year are attributable to the Tory government's shambolic operation of network rail? Cabinet Secretary. Well, Senator Officer, uh, members will be aware of some significant challenges we've had in the east of Scotland, which have been due to infrastructure failures, particularly uh, just outside Haymarket, some of which have been repeated, which I've raised with network rail, asking them to give me assurance that not only are they repairing these uh, particular faults, but also that they are taking forward the necessary infrastructure investment that's necessary to minimise the risk of these types of problems occurring again in the future, because they have caused significant disruption to the network, particularly 
in the east of the country. Overall, in the course of the past uh, 12 months, uh, some 65.5% of all delays on our network are due to infrastructure failures. Uh, as I've said in this chamber on a number of occasions and also at committee, it is critical that both parts of our rail network are operating to the best of their ability to deliver passenger services. That's Network Rail and also the ScotRail uh, franchise. And that's why it's important that we have overall control of both aspects of the rail system in Scotland to ensure that we're running it to the effect that reflects the needs of the people of Scotland. Claire Baker to be followed by Alexander Stewart. I am sure the Cabinet Secretary can now be in no doubt over the appalling service that Fife commuters are experiencing. The most Fifers are being promised by ScotRail is that peak time services will return to normal, just normal, not be improved as a Christmas present. This franchise cannot continue as people are persistently late for work. The economic impact on Fifers cannot be undervalued. Does the Cabinet Secretary recognise this and will he reconsider the need for a fares cut for five services to compensate for this terrible service? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, I do recognise that. That's the very reason why we issued a remedial notice to ScotRail because of the impact on services within the Fife area. And that's why within the remedial notice they set out the range of actions which will be taken in order to address the very issues that are affecting Clare Baker's constituents. Alexander Stewart, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Cabinet Secretary, there is still real misery for commuters in my region of Mid Scotland and Fife. They do not call it the rush hour going to work and coming home. They call it the crush hour yep. because individuals are crammed into trains that are delayed or cancelled and only a number of carriages take place. So what reassurances can I give to my constituent that this situation is going to improve because they see nothing but it getting worse and worse on a weekly basis? Cabinet Secretary. Epstein Officer, uh, one of the things that we've been pressing ScotRail to ensure is that they are utilising all of the rolling stock that they have available to them, but particularly in the east of Scotland, the biggest impact in being able to actually deliver the additional rolling stock it's needed for the east of Scotland is the late de delivery of the high-speed train HSTs from Wabtec and also the late delivery of the 385s from Hitachi, which have had an impact on being able to then move the diesel rolling stock over to the east of the country. Once that is in place, uh, that will free up that rolling stock to allow it to be moved in uh, as well. As it stands at the present moment, uh, there, are, uh, there are approximately 11 of the high-speed trains in place in Scotland at the present moment. Uh, with the utilisation of those um, over the coming months, that will free up the diesel rolling stock that can then be moved into the Fife area, which will provide additional carriages uh, for passengers in that area to deal with the overcrowding problems which are being experienced. Alongside the electrification of the Shorts line into Glasgow, that frees up diesel rolling stock because we can now use 385 electric trains on that particular route. And once we have the full complement of those from Hitachi, which they now say will be delivered by, uh, uh, by the summer of, by August of this year, uh, that will free up diesel rolling stock in that area, which again can be moved into the east of Scotland, into the borders and into Fife to provide the additional rolling stock that's necessary there. So there has been a cascade of rolling stock which will take place, but it's been delayed and it's having an impact on passengers' experiences at the present time in the very way that the member uh, highlights, rightly highlights, uh, but that is in part due to the delays in some of the new rolling stock coming in to allow the freeing up of the diesel rolling stock to move to the east of the country. Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Uh, to what extent does the Cabinet Secretary hold Angel Trains and their contract with Wabtec accountable for the utterly, desperately bad delivery of the HSTs, two delivered in December when 17 were contracted to be refurbished by that date? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, officer, just as I've mentioned, the, there is absolutely no doubt the late delivery of the, HAT, the HSTs had had a significant impact on the ability of ScotRail to move some of its other rolling stock, the 170s in particular, into the east of Scotland, which is having a very adverse impact on passenger experiences in these areas. I've uh, discussed this matter with the Chair of and Chief Executive of Angel Trains. I've also discussed the matter with the Global President in the States of uh, Wabtec about the delay, which is unacceptable. Uh, they've provided me with assurances that they are doing everything they can to try uh, and move this issue forward. They're transferring some of the work uh, up to Kilmarnock uh, in order to try and speed up some of the refurbishment work that's due to be undertaken on the high-speed trains, but there's no doubt that that's having an impact, as is the late delivery of 
the Hitachi 385s, a matter which I raised uh, when I discussed the matter with the global head of Hitachi in Japan, uh, and making it very clear that it's unacceptable that we are experiencing uh, ongoing delays in the delivery of this brand new rolling stock. So these are all having an impact on passengers' experience of what is a very significant level of investment that's going into our railways in Scotland. And I want to see that realised sooner rather than later. And these companies all have a part to play in making sure that they deliver these trains as quickly as possible so passengers get the benefit of that additional investment we're making in Scotland's railways. And Jackie Bailey to be followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Cabinet Secretary, the problem is not confined to the east of Scotland. Performance in parts of the west of Scotland are at a record low. In March, trains arriving on time in Dumbarton, 56%, Balloch, 48%, and Helensburgh, 42%. And for the avoidance of doubt, is nothing to do with training of staff or indeed new rolling stock. And when the trains do show up, presiding officer, they're short form, three carriages instead of six. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell me when we will see a marked improvement in the Helensburgh and Balloch lines? Cabinet Secretary. Mr. President, officer, on a very specific issue, I'll ask ScotRail to provide a very direct uh, answer to the improvements which will be made onto that uh, line. What I can say to the member, though, is that she will be aware that the Donovan Review set a range of measures that had to be implemented to improve, particularly services on the west of uh, Scotland. Uh, in some routes, we have saw marked improvements as a result, but in others, we have not saw uh, the full realisation of those. And the reason for that is because all of the recommendations from the Donovan Review have not been implemented as yet. That's been monitored by the, uh, the Office of the Road and Rail, uh, who have said that ScotRail are making good progress with it, but there is more that still has to be done. And I would expect to see these infrastructure improvements and the other timetable improvements that were recommended to start to deliver better and more reliable services in areas of the west of Scotland. But as I said, on the very specific line that the member made reference to, I'll ask ScotRail to provide the member with a detailed response to that matter. Alex cole -Halton. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary and I have discussed many times the situation at Dalmeny Station in my constituency, which is quite possibly the worst affected by the ScotRail crisis. Just after Christmas, part of the problem of train cancellations was mitigated by putting in additional stop orders on the Aberdeen service coming south at rush hour times. However, I've challenged ScotRail several times to put that same stop order on Aberdeen bound trains leaving Waverley in the evening, but that is still not forthcoming. What pressure can the Cabinet Secretary apply to ScotRail uh, to see that advanced stop order applied. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, in meeting with Alec Hines tomorrow, I'll ask him to address this very issue and to respond to the member specifically on the point he's raised. Thank you very much, and thanks very much to the Cabinet Secretary and members for getting through um, 10 questions. There are more 10 questions, 10 members.